and welcome to season eight of the Abiding Together podcast. Abiding Together is a place where you can find connection, rest, and encouragement on your journey with Jesus Christ. My name is Sister Miriam James Hyland, and each and every week I am joined by two of my very dearest friends, Heather Kim and Michelle Bensinger. This podcast is born out of our friendship and sharing all kinds of things together. Our walk with Jesus, our insights, the lessons we are still learning, our joys, sorrows, tears, and laughter, and you are most welcome on the journey with us. You can find out more information about all of our episodes at abidingtogetherpodcast.com. But for now, grab a cup of coffee, settle in, and welcome home. And welcome to this week's episode of the Abiding Together podcast in our last episode before Advent. And we have a really wonderful guest today that we can't wait for you to meet. And we have a wonderful Advent series. <laughs> so we are in a win-win situation. But before we have Michelle introduce our guest, ladies, how are we doing today? Heather, how are you before we dive into Advent here? So good. We're having one of those days where the sun is shining so bright, but it's crisp outside. It's my favorite. I am up for it. I love today. I'm just all about it. It's been hard. You know, things have been kind of like dreary and rainy and lame. People, Things have been going wrong. I'm like, <laughs> hey, lame. today's a new day. You know, sometimes the sun just makes a world of difference. So how are oh, you, gosh, Michelle? I'm doing good. Yeah, I'm doing good. Of course, the weather is beautiful here in Florida. It is it's a good time to live in the Gulf Coast. My husband said mm. yesterday, he's like, it's a good time. It's 65 degrees, 70 degrees and sunny. It's a little cold. Oh. There's no humidity. So yes, like we're logging lots of hours on our front porch. And if I can be outside multiple hours in the day, it's just a good day for me. And so that's I've already been day. outside like three hours today. So that's a good day for me. I work outside, be outside. So it's just been good. Sister, how are you? Um, I am well. Maybe we could actually record this outside one time. Oh, right. We should like an outdoor... <laughs> recording maybe the next time we're together you never know that'd be a good idea yes i am so excited to welcome this guest and michelle i want you to do that but i just can't wait for our listeners to meet her she's wonderful and she has so much to offer so without further ado michelle would you like to introduce our guest today I would. We have Jackie Mulligan on the podcast with us, Yay. and she is the founder of Reform Wellness. And I won't do explaining Reform Wellness justice, so I'm going to allow her to explain it to us. But I'm just really amazed, and I just have to tell you a little backstory. I'll let her give you more personal details. But I think like this is just an inspiration of the Holy Spirit. A good friend of mine, Father Mark Mary, had told me about her um, on the CFRs last year. Said, "Oh, you should meet Jackie. You you would get along with her." You know, and it was one of those things that went in one ear and out the other, like uh, some things do. And then when Father Innocent and Father Mark Mary were here for a visit in August, they're like, Father Innocent's like, you really need to meet Jackie Mulligan. And then our other good friend, Father John Burns said, Hey, have you met Jackie? And then Jackie messages me and said, Hey, I really feel like we're supposed to connect. And I was about to literally message her the day before and said, I even, I think I even sent one of you a screenshot of her thing. I said, Oh, this is integrated health, what we were talking about. So we were able to talk on the phone for a while and just connect and then found out she's a really good friend with another good friend of ours, Father Joe Fitzgerald. So I was like, okay, <laughs> mm. all the stars are aligning. Our paths are meant to cross. But what she does with Reform Wellness is just really, I think, really important. And we really haven't had a podcast like this before. Where we're talking about integrated health, wholeness and holiness and all those different things. So without further ado, Jackie Mulligan. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. This is um, an answered prayer. And such a gift to, to be with you. I had the gift of meeting Sister Miriam indirectly last year in California. She was presenting with Father John Burns mm. on forgiveness. And that's where she totally captivated me. And then, of course, learning through the wonderful Catholic community about your podcast and, and more about you, Michelle and Heather. And so, yeah, this is such a gift to be here. Thank you. Oh, we love having you. So be so good for our listeners. Tell them about Reform Wellness and just a little bit about yourself and who you are and all of that. Sure. Yeah. So Reform uh, came to be through a, a myriad of uh, experiences, as you can imagine. Um, but Reform Wellness is the first practice of its kind to, ma uh, to merge faith and functional health together. And so we look at the whole person, body, mind, and soul, when we're defining health. 
And so um, in our practice, we empower the whole person to find well-being in God and receive life in abundance. And so really, um, we're reframing our well-being to put Christ in the center of all aspects of how we live. Mm. Oh, I love that. So what was your passion to even start Reform Wellness? Tell them a little bit about the backstory that way. Yeah, so I was once very sick, fatigued, working nonstop, taking on the worries of the world. I always had this like hard worker, type A, perfectionist kind of attitude. And I had this belief that if I were to be successful, it was because I had to work hard enough to get there. And um, if I wasn't, it was because I failed. Mm -hmm. And um, after years of tireless striving success, but lots of stress and and, and compromised health as a result, um, landed Lyme's disease and Mm -hmm. thyroid condition and lots of gut issues. I totally burnt out physically, mentally, and spiritually in the process. Um, So I had um, different careers leading me up to this point. So I actually taught Spanish for several years. I was a tenured Spanish teacher on Long Island. Um, Then I moved out to California, and I went back to school for um, functional health and uh, holistic nutrition, and also worked for a startup company, a Danish startup company called Piri. um, And I ran national sales and helped them kind of grow from the bottom up. And so I was, I was having a lot of uh, fun kind of combining my passions of education and, and wellness, and, um, but that kind of led me to, to getting kind of sick. Um, and so thanks be to God, um, I finally surrendered and I found my identity, my healing, and my wholeness in Christ. Um, and that was through a, a lot of time and adoration that I found a much more simple way to, to approach health and to approach overall well-being and, and, and really my success in the world. And so with the help of a lot of saints, and I have to mention them because I wouldn't be here if it, if it weren't for, for the, the saints, St. Saint Francis, St. Saint Teresa of Avila, and St. Clair, um, I had already established a wellness practice out in California. Michelle and I were talking about this when we first spoke. And I was working with people and talking all about nutrition and stress management and sleep and functional movement, all things you would think we would talk about in in a wellness practice. And after people wanted to renew their packages with me, like after year two and after year three, and I was just thinking like, am I doing my job if they still want to work with me? At this point, you should have the tools you need. And I slowly started to realize in prayer that what they were desiring from me was not so much the wellness tools I was giving them, but the light that I had and the connection that I had Mm. in Christ and that they were hungry for more of that because there was still this like restlessness, even in all the work we did, no matter how much weight people lost or how much they were able to lift in the gym or how much we improved their sleep, they were still hungry for more. Mm. And when I I realized this, I began inviting God fully into the center of of my life, um, being grateful for the light that I I realized other people were aware of, and also my, my work. And that was hard for me, because it was almost like, who am I to, to start doing this? And, and clear as day, it was, who are you yeah. not mm. to be doing this? Like, this is your, this is now your, your thing. And so, um, I truly just knew that if I wanted to talk this talk, I needed to walk the walk. And I invited Christ fully into the uh, center of my life. And he, he t- turned me right side mm. up for sure. Um, mm. and that resulted in my life changing significantly. I, I, left certain jobs. I weeded, let's say, my community garden. And I left the very beautiful comforts and and like just lifestyle that I had in California and reluctantly came back to to New York. Um, I'm one of seven. I have 17 nieces and nephews. I have an amazing family. It was like I was attached to this freedom in quotation marks that I had in California in a lot of different ways, like the the freedom I experienced even in nature or the, the freedom I experienced um, kind of being on my own and the freedom I experienced in a lot of worldly attachments that actually weren't really free mm-hmm. at all. And it was the struggle um, and the the hardship of, of detaching from that, 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 um, that kind of made me resist the, the very thing I needed to do the most, which was, which was to move back, um, to, to New York. And it was confusing though, because like the health world is in California, mm-hmm. right? And so it's, you know, 
was like, how does this make, like, Lord, why are you asking me to go back? Like, everything that I can do is here. Um, this is like the health capital of the US, you know, this doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, but like most things, you know, we, we lean not on our own understanding and, 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 and try to be as obedient as we can. So when I came back, the the floodgates open and and I had more work opportunities than I truly could manage. I was completely overwhelmed by it. Um, and I was still trying to understand like what this new version of my wellness practice was. It was so beyond me and my control. And on uh, New Year's Eve 2016, um, while I was still in California, I made Jesus a deal. And I said that he was going to be my business coach. And wherever he um, paved the the light, I would, I would, I would go. And so um, almost immediately upon uh, coming back to New York, I met Father Joe Fitzgerald um, and Father Innocent of the CFRs, and I helped them with their personal journey. And it was through their reformations that my eyes opened and was like, wow, even priests need to look mm. at, at their their physical well-being <laughs> and, 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 um, and their spiritual well-being. It was amazing. Um, and so I realized that the people that I was helping, lay people, were they're so focused on their their physical well-being and not enough on their souls. Um, and that that priests um, or religious were so passionate about the the state of their souls and other souls that there was just not enough attention mm-hmm. on the body. And so I knew that um, actually St. Augustine, um, with his help, kind of focused on knowing that um, if we um, we have to live, um, if we want to live forever, we have to take care of the state of our, our body. And, and in order to, to nourish our soul, we have to act as if we're going to die tomorrow. And really having this approach on the body and the soul together. And so... It was through those two reformations and then Father Innocent then inviting me to journey with the postulants on their formation that I was able to run the wellness program. And I watched month after month these men reform to the, to, from, the, from the inside out fully at the service of Christ through a life of obedience day after day, obediently following this formation and literally leaving with a new name mm-hmm. after a year of this beautiful formation. And that's how reform got its name through the, the CFR's formation and watching them reform. It was such a great gift. And so it was really the years that I had of working with a variety of clients in California and then religious life, corporations, schools um, from around the globe and watching all of these different habits and cultures and realizing there was a common denominator. And that that was that others were striving to find their way to wholeness and holiness as well. And that there is a deep desire to live fully alive in Christ, body, mind, and soul. That's so beautiful. <laughs> that's so beautiful. Yeah, we're all like, yes. And I think that's so needed. And a lot of times on our podcast, we talk about the integration of the human person, that it's not just one thing. It's about your emotional health. It's about your spiritual health. It's about your mental health. It's about your physical health. And so you're... Uh, you're just fitting right in here and speaking to an audience that is so hungry to hear what you have to say. And I was wondering for people that are listening, and I'm sure a lot of women are saying, I need that. <laughs> like, But where do they start? Can you just give us some simple, like, what are the, p- the pillars where you would recommend that a woman's listening today saying, okay, it's Advent, it's a new year. Where do I start? Like, what do you, what do you have to say to them? So I'll say two things to this. So at Reform, um, we have nine pillars that we focus on and to how we really reframe and redefine health. And so faith is at the center. So we have actually the image of a monstrance um, mm. that we use to define how we define wellness. And so because reform was born in adoration, faith is at the center and Christ will stay at the center. And then we have eight other pillars that go around faith. They are nutrition, sleep, stress management, community, personal growth, space, movement, mm. and play. And so instead of defining our health solely on the scale or the way that we eat or um, our body composition, we're looking at all of these different areas of our health equally. And of course, faith will, will be a little bit stronger and, and, and weave throughout. Um, but how we interact with other people is just as important as the food on our plate. And when we put more importance on one thing and, and focus so much on our diet or focus so much on our movement, that takes the place of, of God in a lot of people's lives. It's kind of like becomes mm-hmm. their idol. 
um, or their main focus or distracts us. Like really, especially in the season of Advent, like creating space for God. And there's these distractions because of how the world tells us that we should be defining our well-being or health. So we define health there. And so Really, though, the first step is, and I'm going to kind of take you on the path to holiness um, that we use at Reform. So one day when I was at the Friars, I was uh, setting up a meeting with Brother Colby. And um, if you don't know Brother Colby, don't worry, he's for sure going to be a saint. So you will you will know him. Mm -hmm. We were about to meet. And before we did, he said, um, Jackie, I really actually need some time to pray before we meet together um, because I'm not holy like you. I'm actually really holy, like H-O-L-E-Y. And I was like, Brother Colby, I could assure you you're a lot more holy than I am and that I'm the one who has the holes, right? It was so humbling to hear him say that to me. I was in mass later that evening, almost overwhelmed in humility by, by him admitting like he's got a lot of holes to work on and and to bring before the Lord before we work together. I heard like we hear in every mass, holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, completely different. It was like the Lord just opened my eyes and I heard it as holy, like H-O-L-E-Y. We have to first expose our holes and show the Lord the areas where we struggle the most. He already knows them, but it's all inviting him um, to to see them and to say, I know you know this already, Lord, but but here they are. And then holy, like W-H-O-L-L-Y, inviting him into the holes to make us whole so that together we can be on the path to holiness, regular H-O-L-Y. So holy, holy, holy Mm -hmm. took on a whole new meaning in our practice. And when we work with people, the very first step is awareness and having this awareness around number one, where is your health right now? What's the state of your body? What's the state of your soul? Just like you would prepare for the sacrament of reconciliation, like really doing examination of conscious, like knowing where your body is and knowing what the state of your health is. And then also where the areas are in your health that you haven't invited the Lord into, or maybe didn't even realize that you had control over. And so for women who are hungry um, for this true change, inviting the Lord in to reveal to you the area of your well-being that you need to focus on, that would bring him into your life even more and you closer to him. And ultimately, you will be able to reach all of the pillars that I just talked about, um, but there is always one that outweighs the other. And it's usually the one that we back burner because we want to get to the food first or or personal growth first. And it's, it's actually stress management um, or it's our relationship with the Lord to, to begin with. And so just this beautiful gift of awareness to reveal our holes um, so that we can allow him to reveal the path and and the new focus. Wow, that's incredible. I know like for so many of us, like I, I want to live an integrated life. I think for many people, it's like I want to live an integrated life. Balance is a big word, you know, having everything all figured out. And there's times where I go through, I'm like, man, I'm nailing it. I'm, I'm, I'm just hitting on all cylinders. I'm doing really well. And that's for like a day. And then I'm like back to, you know, doing one thing well or two <laughs> things well. It's very hard to have everything working like very, all, all of the time. So I'm just wondering, what are some of the main obstacles that you have seen to living an integrated life and how maybe just for one of them, what's like a tool that we could mm-hmm. overcome that? Yeah, thank you. This is a great question. Number one obstacle is the the, the demands of the world, for sure. Mm-hmm. Like this glorifying busyness, this this unrealistic pace that everybody is living at even even in the middle of a, a mm-hmm. global pandemic, honestly. Then there's this fear that overcomes people when it comes to wellness, this fear of failure, this fear of exposure, fear of change, mm-hmm. and really like allowing opposition to fly through that window of doubt and lying to us saying, you're going to have to overhaul your whole life. This is going to be really hard for you. You failed about a hundred times. You're probably just going to fail again. And so really it's, it's the courage to go through the straight and narrow and let go of the, the very things that we're resisting the most. And when, when people ask me this question, like, what's the first thing that I can do to be healthier? I know they're expecting me to say, like, eat more protein or get exercise, which, which are actually real tangible things you can do to be healthier. 
Um, but the first tool is, and I often say is, make space for the Lord. So if that means committing to a holy hour every day, or getting to daily mass, or praying the rosary, do something every day that is going to create space for him. Because if you want to live a Christ-centered life, you want to live you know, people are attracted to reform because Christ is at the center of of their well-being because they want to be closer to Christ in all mm-hmm. aspects, right? They, want, they desire this freedom and to live life fully alive. And so I say, if you really want to live life abundantly, there is time and you will find time and actually he'll make the time. So it's going all in. It's choosing to say, okay, I want Christ at the center of my life. And I want him there. So therefore, I'm going to make space for him. And I'm going to hand over the control I think I have over my well-being and my health and allow him to heal me. Because truly, when we take a radical posture of trust and in truth, we put our total focus on him. He's the one who heals Mm -hmm. and renews. Mm -hmm. And we have to create space for him in order to do that. So I honestly, the first thing you can do is create that space for him. And I think it's, I think it's creating the space and making your integrated health, your whole person, a priority, you know, and it goes back to the great commandment, love your neighbor as Mm -hmm. yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think Mm -hmm. especially for women, we love um, our neighbors or our families or everyone else. And I've talked, we've talked about this on podcasts before we put everyone else before ourself mm. and we think mm. it's because, Oh, but that's the selfless thing to do. But really, is it like loving your neighbor as yourself? Mm. Like, are you loving yourself? Well, are you really loving in all areas of yourself? Like we're just at the very beginning of the reform wellness week two, we're going into kind of week two and a half, three for us. And I could just see just the little changes. I think one of the beautiful ways that you do this is I, it's been one of my first approaches because this has been a theme. Like I really truly felt like our encounter was something the Holy Spirit, because just the people in my life that mentor me said, you have to take a holistic approach. And like, I even laugh like over like the summer, Chris, my husband and sister Miriam sat down like, okay, enough is enough. They kind of did a a really kind intervention and said, your health has to be a priority. Mm -hmm. You know, how do we help you? Because I was, so many people giving to so many people. And I put myself on the back burner, you know, and if something went out, you know, it would be my exercise. If something else went out, be like, Oh, this is easier. You know, it's just all those things because you're taking care of other people. So I just think for women, especially it's for everybody, but for women, allowing yourself to love yourself well Mm -hmm. and a God given way, not a selfish way, but a God given way to put your self first is just a powerful thing. So, I mean, is it for you, like after you lead people through this program, do you see like, what does the reform look like to, you know, in people like how, because it does make them human. And I like, we really don't have conversations where we talk about spiritual growth and rest our spiritual growth and play mm-hmm. our spiritual growth, our movements, mm-hmm. you know, but yet they're part of our spiritual beings mm-hmm. in our life because we're, you know, fully alive human people. I think the biggest, honestly, I see so many different things at the end of what you're referencing is Reform Online Live. So it's six weeks and we have women of all ages and walks of life go through this program. And it's incredible because sometimes it takes six weeks or even longer to fully give their fiat, to fully say, yes, okay, now I'm ready to put Christ at the center of everything. And other times it's, They've got that already, and it's it's really allowing him to prune their branches of the things that they don't want to give up. It's something like coffee, right? Yeah, exactly. really you like mentioned coffee. that the other day, and I was like, <laughs> "Yep, turn in, turn the headphones yeah. off. <laughs> we, we love you. We'll, we still have you on the show. It's okay. We love you." <laughs> um, but just connecting that to wow, actually, that was really triggering to my anxiety, mm-hmm. and I didn't really want to let that go. But turns out. I'm really free and available now that it's not in my Mm -hmm. life or just, I mean, the grace of being able to actually implement rest, especially through the Sabbath. That is probably the most common change that I see people coming out of this program with. Yes, there's weight loss. Yes, of course, there's a new lens on how they look at at their well-being. But to be able to say, 
me and my family connect and we're connected with one another and the Lord, and we're not doing anything except for resting in the Lord and with one another today and mm-hmm. reclaiming that time, reprioritizing that time. That's what we mean when we say put Christ at the center of all things and, and not compartmentalizing in, in, in certain areas for women to experience food freedom, because the, the why to behind the, the, the reason um, why they eat is no longer because, um, they want to satisfy a, a short-term craving, um, or that they're they're hungry for something else and and fulfilling it with food, um, and then still experiencing hunger. But their why is now to have a healthy response to their hormones and a healthy gut, and also a healthy spiritual response mm-hmm. from the way that they eat. Mm-hmm. So it's just incredible. The again, this awareness, this this piece um, that keeps happening, so that we can make these changes consistently um, and grow closer to the Lord That's in the awesome. journey. What That's is so your great. dream, Jackie? What is your dream for Reformed? And I, we'd love to also give your platform just you know full visibility and how women, I'm sure many women are like, where do I sign up? Like I want to sign up right now. <laughs> so what is your dream and where can women find you so they can sign up? You know, I was really praying about this and to be very honest and transparent, Reform already feels like a dream come true for me. Mm, um, the fact that, that Every day we get to journey along, journey alongside people on their path to wholeness and holiness. It's it's beyond my comprehension. We do dream big. I know I know that uh, he's got his hands in this. Um, but as an experienced educator, I would love to see reform more integrated in schools. Um, I want to reach young people and help in their formation. We've recently written a, a Christ-centered curriculum that I'd love to see further integrated in more schools and even in, in home schools. You know, that's something that I, I'm dreaming of. I would love to write a book series, you know, reform your family, reform your relationship, mm. reform your, mm. your Sabbath. Like, let's just reform everything. <laughs> <That's a good laughs> But um, but I have just inc- such an incredible team already, and and I would love to see reform ambassadors, you know, on the ground and um, people outside of me, just able to to really who are wa- who are truly walking this walk, who are able to help mm-hmm. others really understand um, what it means to to live with Christ at the center as a, as a whole person. And so um, we we offer um, one-on-one consulting. We work, at, like I had mentioned, in schools and in businesses and have a six-week online program called Reform Online Live. So reaching us on our website, which is reformwellness.co is, is the best way, um, or following us on our new Instagram handle, which is at reform underscore wellness. Mm. And I also just want to recommend that if there's anyone doing priestly formation, that they would just sign up all their seminarians for this. (laughs) Okay. Uh, This is something that my husband tries to teach seminarians because I think just from the get go, they're going to be living on their own. Many of them don't have a, somebody who's cooking for them and helping them. And they can, like you said, spend their lives for the good of souls and often, leave their own uh, yeah. wellness in the dust. So yeah, this is a tremendous gift. I feel like for everyone across the board, I love your approach that you're not leaving any piece out. And mm-hmm. I think that often when people mm-hmm. have focused in on on their health and wellness, it can turn into really self-serving or a place where they find their identity so quickly if Christ isn't at the center. And I love how you're just keeping everything balanced with him at the very center. I think that there's a peace that comes with that because that's where the identity is found. And then we build all of these other blocks around it, which in turn helps us to make a greater gift of ourselves. Mm-hmm. And that's what I heard you saying, Michelle, is yeah. like putting ourselves first sometimes doesn't mean that we're overtaking an opportunity for someone else or to give for someone else, it actually increases our capacity to give yeah. more fully to those around us mm-hmm. and to the world. Yeah, I was just reading, I recommended a book on the podcast a couple of weeks ago called Living from the Heart Jesus Gave You, which is part of the Life Model series. And they define adult maturity as the ability to take care of two people simultaneously, yourself and another because up until that time, you will either be as a little kid trying to take care of yourself or you will be people pleasing and trying to take care of other people out there to the neglect of yourself. And they were saying neither one is really the adult version of maturity that we're talking about, because the more I can take care of myself, so to speak, then I can give to you. I can be well and I can I can give to you. And it just as you're talking, Jackie, and as we kind of uh, close here, I just think so much of Father Jacques Philippe, who often will just say little by little. <laughs> just mm-hmm. little by little it happens just you take the next step forward and i appreciate your 
articulation of this beautiful process and just asking women just, just to take the next right step. Really, that's all you're doing. And it's such a mm -hmm. gentle and such an inspiring and hopeful invitation. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's um it's really just dialing it back a little bit or or forward a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's 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 and I can't tell you how many women and men in in our practice will say, "Wow, I can't believe with just these few changes how much my life has changed for the better." And it's not this overhaul of your life. Eventually it will be when you look at all you've done in the long term, but to really make deep rooted changes in Christ, you know, it is going little by little and it is going um all in. Uh, with him at the center. It is. And I, I can just testify to that. Like I was telling the girls before we started recording, just the rest thing that you suggested, just not being on my computer or any kind of phone or social media an hour before I go to bed, you know, and I was switch that out just to creating a nighttime, just little ritual that's different. I have slept awesome people <laughs> the last two or three days. And like, let me just tell you, you know, like that has been a struggle. Like, you know, my mind does not sh shut off very well, easily. So I've just been doing these things. It's like my body craves that rhythm that I didn't even know I needed, mm -hmm. you know, and I love for us just even the term abiding, you know, we base that off of John 15, but rhythms like rhythms of life and spiritual disciplines are like a trellis. Mm -hmm. Like that's what the, tr you know, that's what the translation is. And so we all need these trellises so we can grow mm -hmm. fully alive. And it's just these implementing these rhythms, but it wasn't these vast changes that I made. It was very simple but it's intentional it's and I think that's yep. the key. They're mm -hmm. intention, intentional mm -hmm. and consistent. But I'm like, but man, when you start to see a little bit of fruit, you're like, oh, mm -hmm. give me more. You're like, I want more. So, yeah. So thank you so much for your for your fiat, for your full yes. We are grateful and I'm sure our listeners will be also. Mm -hmm. Jackie, is there just like one thing that you would say to someone who's like, I just want to do one little thing that I'm, that might bear good fruit in my life. One, like you said, little by little, is there one thing that you would recommend for people to start with? Um, well, I, I was thinking about this and I, I actually, I wrote to Michelle like, okay, I have recommendations. I, you know, where, which, what's my one thing here? I really want to pray about it. And, um, I was thinking about what's really bringing me, um, more awareness and, and joy right now. And I am reading this book. I don't know if I'm going to call it little Heather, but I will tell you, um, the Interior Castle by St. Teresa oh, dang, of Avila. girl. Come on. Whoa. Come on. <laughs> That's no small thing. Yes. <laughs> it's no small thing, but I'm taking it little by little mm -hmm. and piece by piece. Yeah. And it has Good. opened up inner dwellings inside of me that I didn't even know were there and um, changed my faith life, um, changing my prayer life, um, just connecting me on, on, on levels, even in reform that are just amazing. Um, I can't even believe the parallels she's where, where, I mean, she was the reformer. So a lot of, mm -hmm. um, uh, our, our logo is the Holy spirit because of St. Teresa of Avila. She was just incredible. Um, and mm. so when I finally dove in and, and, and I'm reading this piece by piece, I can honestly tell you that it brings so much peace because it allows, it gives permission for you to go into your own interior castle. And that's mm -hmm. such a gift right there. Can't go wrong, St. Mm -hmm. Teresa of Avila. <laughs> no, you can't. Yeah. You can't. <laughs> She's yeah. my girl. She's my I, girl. I knew yeah. I loved you, Jackie. Uh, no. <laughs> Heather, what about you? What's your one thing for the week? Uh, my one thing is a relatively new album from Hillsong United called Take Heart Again. And they have this old song called Take Heart. And uh, they just, all of the songs on this album, they've recorded before. These are just new renditions of these songs. To be honest with you, I listened to three seconds of each song and I was like, ew, no, don't like it because I was like so attached to the original. But as I've just had it on in the background in my office as I've been working, I've just been finding that I actually just keep on like stopping what I'm doing and join in this worship that they're creating. There's something about these songs in particular for this time. I really do believe the Holy Spirit inspired them with these particular songs mm. for this time. They've just been really fruitful in my prayer. So uh, the link to that will be mm. in the show notes. Take, take Heart Again by Hillsong United. Mm -hmm. Take Heart in this. Michelle. Yeah. Mine is a podcast called Bold Blooming by my friend Jill Simons. And I was just a oh, guest yay. on her podcast. We recorded it this week, but it will already be out when this one, this podcast airs. Well, we talk about just uh, cultivating community, like Jackie was saying, one of the pillars. But I love Jill because I just, she asked me, how do you cultivate community where you're at? So I just gave her a few like practical suggestions. And man, that girl just went out and did it. Like, I just love people that, you know, like you offer your 
advice or your limited wisdom and then they take it and run with it. And she is just, I love her creative zeal and just her whole um, demeanor. And yeah, she's just mm-hmm. a dear one. So our community on Bold Blooming, I will link that podcast episode mm-hmm. here in our show notes. Nice. Sister, what about you? Mm, that's fun. My one thing uh, for this week is a new Advent series by Ascension Press. So I've been doing a project with Father Mark Toops and Father Josh Johnson for the last couple of years. And Father Mark Toops released the third version of that, which is uh, Rejoice Advent Meditations with Mary and Joseph. And this year he wrote them through the lens of the marriage of Mary and Joseph. And it Ooh. is... It's- Oh, good. Absolutely stunning. It has original artwork. There's reflections by Father Mark and Father Josh and myself. And you can find that whole series uh, for Advent on ascensionpress.com. But uh, he, Father Mark Toops does such a beautiful job. I just, his ability to articulate the love between Mary and Joseph, it opened up new areas of my own heart that I didn't know were there. Oh, wow. And it just, it was stunning. So it was a delight to be a very small part of it. Yeah. So oh, y'all, the artwork they did to go with it too. I was really impressed. Way to go, mm-hmm. Ascension Press. It was beautiful. Yeah. It was really pretty. That's Awesome. Yeah, very, very lovely. Jackie, do you have like a practical tip other than rooting coffee out of your life? Because we're not there yet. <laughs> Baby steps. Do you have one practical tip uh, for us and our listeners that you can think of off the top of your head now that I'm putting you on the spot? Let's have you ladies pick a pillar. So we have, you can pick nutrition, sleep, stress, movement, personal growth, play. I know mine is play. I put that on my goal list this week is to play. And so, and that just came up a lot in prayer this week, Mm -hmm. Um, Mm. which, and so, and it was interesting. I was telling um, someone yesterday, I was like, okay, I just need to play and to play, play. It's just like, or you can ask the Holy Spirit to inspire you to play. You (laughs) usually follow the promptings of the Holy Spirit and he'll like send you something. I'm like, okay, that's true too. So Mm. yeah, mine is play. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's wonderful. Jackie, thank you so much for being Hold on, sister. I want to hear one of your pillars. Oh, can I pray about it and see? <laughs> yeah, sorry. Let me, mm. let me see. Let me ask the Holy Spirit and see. <laughs> I'm going to say sleep for me. I, I mm-hmm. can pick all those, but yeah, sleep would be mm-hmm. mine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, um, one of the, for, for play, you can recreate childhood fun, right? So trying to recreate a childhood memory, that's one thing that I always invite people to do. Um, oh, that's cute. And, and Heather for sleep. Michelle said it earlier, but I've never seen it fail. Uh, unplugging the first and last hour of your day. So before um, before bed for a full hour and then upon rising, no technology, first thing. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. <laughs> Sister, to be continued. <laughs> yeah, indefinitely. Let me, let me see what the Lord wants to say there. <laughs> TBD. TBD. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Jackie. Thank you for being on our podcast. And we can't wait for our, all of our listeners to encounter you. And we just bless you. You're just lovely. I wish our listeners could see you. You're just so radiantly beautiful. And we just thank you for your yes and for sharing your gift with the world. Thank you. This is this is beyond an answered prayer and a gift. And I'm, I'm grateful. Mm-hmm. And we'll put links to your webcast or your um, website and your uh, Instagram account and everything so our listeners can very easily find you. So yes, dear friends, where does the Lord want to reform you? And maybe just asking the Lord that right now, Lord, what what's one pillar you want to start with? And little by little, we will see our hearts transformed into his glory. So thank you for joining us this week. And until next week, we will be abiding together. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode. If you liked it, would you please share it with a friend? We encourage you to head over to our website, abidingtogetherpodcast.com, where you can find all the show notes, links to our one thing, transcripts, group discussion questions for each episode, and beautiful mugs, t-shirts, journals, and prints in our shop. There you can also subscribe to receive our weekly email with links to each new episode and all of its content. We'd love to connect on social media and invite you to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter so you can catch inspiring reflections every day. You're also welcome to join our private Facebook group and dive deeper into discussions with our fellow listeners. If the podcast has blessed you, would you prayerfully consider financially supporting us? The Abiding Together podcast is only available due to the generous support of our listeners. There are significant costs associated with creating this content, such as tech support, design, website, equipment, and hired staff that we need to be able to continue offering great content to you. Abiding Together is a nonprofit 501c3, and all donations are tax deductible. You can make donations of any amount through a website called Patreon, or you can send us a check directly if that's easier. 
If you donate $15 or more per month on our Patreon page, you become a tribe member and you will receive monthly individual videos from Michelle, Heather, and I, as well as other exclusive content, recipes, playlists, downloadable prints, and more. You can find all the information about Patreon at patreon.com forward slash abiding together. Thank you and God bless you.